This is a replica of a Benin bronze head. What you're seeing on your screen now is a real Benin bronze head. It's not bronze, it's actually ivory and it's apparently worth upwards of 14 million dollars. The head is part of a collection of bronze and ivory sculptures and castings from the ancient empire of Benin in what is today known as Nigeria. When they were first discovered by Europeans, the famous German ethnologist von Luchan said that neither Benvenuto Cellini himself nor anybody before or after him up to the present day could possibly improve upon them. So where are these amazing works of art today? Well, a lot of them are in the private possession of European collectors, including the British royal family, or in museums across Europe from where they are sometimes loaned to America. Now there's the obvious problem here of African history having been hoarded by countries that within living memory claimed Africans had no civilization worthy of speaking of, whilst they plundered and hid away the evidences of those civilizations. But let's leave that aside for now. It's currently being claimed by a lot of people in the media and on YouTube that black people are injecting themselves in the histories of places where they don't belong and the usual suspects are currently loving this fiasco. The videos just will not stop. Oh no, they're making Cleopatra black when she was a beautiful Greek woman as perfectly depicted by Elizabeth Taylor. Well, with uh, due respect to the inbred community, and I'm sure there's one, uh, Cleopatra was very, very unlikely to have been beautiful as she was inbred to the nth degree like a lot of ancient royal families were. But if we stay on topic, like the next guy, I'm all for accurate historical representations. I don't really want to see Idris Elba uh, cast as King Charles II just because the king was nicknamed the black boy. However, the problem people like me have is that as Billy Joel says, we didn't start the fire. It was always burning since the world's been turning. Yes, there are some people of the black persuasion who are injecting the black story any and everywhere they can, in places and times where it doesn't really belong. And no, ancient Egypt is not one of those places. It was a black civilization and we was and are kings. Still, let's be honest, the extreme Afrocentric school of thought is a reaction. Yes, an overreaction, but a reaction nonetheless. And it's a reaction to the decades, no, centuries of lies used to suppress and denigrate the truth about black civilization and its impact on world history. I take the Benin bronzes I started this video talking about. When they were first discovered by Europeans, their academia concluded that the Benin people couldn't possibly have created such masterful pieces of art themselves and that the knowledge must have come from Portuguese traders who had first made contact with the Benin people at the closing of the Middle Ages. According to Eva Meyerowitz of Burlington Magazine in 1943, that was the opinion of English scholars Ormond Maddock Dalton and Charles Hercules. Meanwhile, the Benin people have always maintained consistently in their oral traditions that their skill and knowledge in creating these works came from them and can be traced back to the neighboring kingdom of Ife of the Yoruba peoples. And the truth is and always has been that the bronzes were made in Benin prior to the Portuguese's arrival and that truth is now a readily accepted fact. Now, what did Africans do while the lie ran rampant in Europe that great works of African art had been taught to them by Europeans. <laughs> Chilling. <laughs> Life moved on. Africans smirked and carried on doing what Africans do best, swimming against the tide and looking good whilst doing it. You certainly didn't have endless shrieking across something called YouTube that Whitey was stealing everything black. 
Now cast your mind back to the kingdom of Ife I mentioned earlier. The Yoruba peoples of that ancient civilization also for a period had to endure the intellectual appropriation of their greatness. They have a long history of similar metallurgic, artistic and architectural practices to the Benin people. You would think so as the kingdom of Ife is historically supposed to have given birth to the kingdom of Benin. There are a variety of these beautifully sculpted bronze heads that come from Ife, but like the Benin works, many of the best pieces are to be found in European museums and private collections. And like the Benin works, when the archaeologist and historian Leo Frobenius came across these heads himself, he and other experts refused to accept that Africans created such amazing things. So he came up with one of the most ridiculous ideas you will ever hear. Atlantis. Yeah, that's right. Frobenius claimed that it was great, adventurous ancient Greeks who had traveled to and established the lost city of Atlantis in this part of the world and that the artwork was a leftover of that time. You might think this is so obviously ridiculous and how could anyone have taken that seriously at the time? Well, guess what? It's happening again, even today. There's guys like Graham Hancock who have gained huge followings today for claims that Egyptian and Aztec pyramids were built by a lost civilization that was smarter and more advanced and taught the native peoples of these places how to build, farm, write and so on. What can we say to this? Well, whatever. <laughs> Eventually, Leo Frobenius and his claims died away and so too will Graham Hancock's. Those who know the truth just need to keep the truth alive by speaking it, regardless of the claims that were Afrocentric this and Afrocentric that. But it's still important to note that for a long period of time, the idea that distant foreigners gave black people everything worthy of note in their various civilizations was actually taught with a straight face, as though it were fact, by the ancestors of those now screaming foul. I could go on, I could talk about the great walls of Zimbabwe which for many years were claimed by white and Arab sources against very obvious contrary evidence to have been built by anyone other than the people who actually lived on the land for thousands of years beforehand, black people. But I think I've made my point. Here we are well into the 21st century and certain types are frothing at the mouth that an ancient history documentary would dare to cast a black woman as queen over a country that sits firmly on a continent where black people have lived, loved, travelled throughout and dominated since the dawn of time. For the record, I'm fairly sure Cleopatra was Greek and thus what we would call white. But that's besides the point. I don't know Jade Pinkett Smith personally, but I wouldn't be surprised if she and the rest of the producers of Netflix Cleopatra are just enjoying some good old fashioned trolling right now. However, for all the righteous YouTubers currently pretending to be zealots for historical accuracy, judging by your proximity to the very recent history of the appropriation of other people's cultures, you ought to remember that those who live in glass houses shouldn't be so ready to throw stones. Or even better put, you might want to take the log out of your own eyes first before looking for the specks in others. It's a real bad move when you sneak up on them and they can't see you coming.